Hi guys, Harps Harps here. Welcome to part 2 of what we can expect to find in the city of Baldur's Gate. This video will contain data mine spoilers and will have references to the D&D adventure Descent into Avernus. So please stop watching now if any of the spoilers within those two sources will cause you to rage quit this video. I'd like to say a big thank you to my latest patron, Kolchak. I really appreciate you signing up and welcome aboard. Okay, let's go. So in my last video I spoke about priests getting murdered, the state of the flaming fist and a city wide lockdown. But in today's video I'll be focusing on a refugee crisis that may be affecting the city and a mysterious disease. Fuck. All this talk of lockdowns and mysterious diseases is starting to feel oddly familiar. Anyway, let's take a look at this refugee crisis first. If I type refugees into a file called english.xml, I get 71 hits. That's compared to only 36 hits on the previous patch. But that's to be expected, because Larian have added lots of new lines regarding the city of Baldur's Gate itself. So what's this refugee crisis all about? I mentioned briefly at the end of the last video that Baldur's Gate appears to be closed to travellers, and there is a refugee crisis happening in Descent into Avernus due to the fact that refugees have come from the land of Eltergard after Elterel got dragged into the Nine Hells. By the time of Baldur's Gate 3, Elterel is back upon the Material Plane, and that all happened very recently in 1492 DR, the same year that Baldur's Gate 3 is set. See my pinned comment down below as to why it isn't 1494, because I know that there is some confusion around this in the Descent into Avernus adventure. Now I don't think that the refugees we will come across at Baldur's Gate will all be tieflings. The group we come across in the Druid Grove have been especially marginalised because of their connection to the Infernal, and Elturians have likely scapegoated the tieflings and placed some blame on them for the events that took place in Elturel. We can see reference to this fear around tieflings in books that are within the game already. The refugee crisis in Bolo's Gate will be a continuation of the one happening in Descent into Avernus, because it is the same crisis. In Descent into Avernus, we can read that Elturel has just been pulled into Hell, and there were displaced people all over Eltergard. And even after Elturel had been restored in Baldur's Gate 3, the destruction that the Descent wrought upon the city has likely made much of the land uninhabitable. Think of the devastating effect that being literally dragged into Hell would have on the population, economy and livelihoods of the people of Elturel. It's obvious that they would go to Baldur's Gate in order to seek out better things. However, although I think many refugees will be from Elturel, I don't think all of them are. Remember that in Baldur's Gate 3, gnolls, drow and goblins have become emboldened through the Absolute and are marauding around the Sword Coast, and this has no doubt led to even more refugees seeking the shelter of Baldur's Gate from other areas. A press release from Larian says the following, we know that the world is in turmoil. Armies of evil, gnolls, orcs, dwergar, goblins and drow rampage along the Sword Coast, and refugees swarm to Baldur's Gate. So this doesn't only reference Elturel, but let's take a look at some of the lines that might reference this. Desperate people from desperate places. Elturel, Scornabel, worse. Devil spawn and gutter scum, there's really no hope for that sort of folk. We're from a few places. My sister and I are from a fishing town up north. We've got refugees staying with us from Elturel, Subar, even Scornabel. Scornabel is situated just to the east of Elturel and Subar is situated to the north. They're all relatively close to the Chiantar River and therefore within reach of the Cult of the Absolute. So with it in mind that the descent of Elturel isn't the only thing causing the refugee crisis, let's take a look at what's happening specifically at Baldur's Gate. Larian seemed to be drawing upon a common theme of us versus them, with the refugees being viewed by some average Baldurians as the other, not worthy of the same privileges that are afforded to the citizens of the city. We can see this mentality reflected in the lines shown here. Now everyone needs an entry card, and we honest Baldurians are left out in the cold while the refugees get all the cards their hearts desire. So I don't know who says this line, but it is likely not true because we can see other lines referencing just how difficult it is for refugees to enter. You think you're the first to try to bribe me? Look around, all these refugees would give anything to get inside. We had to flee our homes, Volus Gate was supposed to be safe, a refuge for us, but the city doesn't want any more refugees. I imagine that when we reach the city we won't be able to enter it initially, we'll need one of these entry cards and there will likely be underhanded ways to get one, as well as more noble methods. I'm assuming there will be options as to how we can treat the refugees. I mean, we were able to choose to massacre the tieflings in the grove. 
but being able to massacre entire communities is just a common theme in Baldur's Gate. You may remember in the first one, we could just murder an entire village of Zvarts without even taking a hit to our reputation. <laughs> Die non-human. <laughs> In fact, the majority of opinions on refugees at Baldur's Gate seems negative, so I imagine there will be many options to be a total d and screw them over. Baldur's Gate was a mess even before all these refugees showed up, but now, politics I'm sure, it's always politics. The Dukes talk a good game, but if I had my way, we wouldn't be letting in refugees at all. Let them go somewhere else, why should the people of Elturel be our problem? You should have a gripe with these refugees too. If it weren't for them, you wouldn't have any trouble getting back into the city. All the refugees are thieves, just pick one. I said in a previous video that Duke Ravenguard outlawed the worship of the Absolute in the city of Baldur's Gate, which means that he likely decreed this before he went to Elturel. It obviously wasn't spoken about in Descent into Avernus, and the cult is a new addition created by Larian, but I think that because of this, the cult of the Absolute was in its early days before Elturel fell. It has obviously spread like wildfire since then. So this line, which states that Duke Ravenguard outlawed the cult, also implies that there may be some cultists within the refugees. This is something I could see happening. If the cult wanted to enter the city, then no doubt they would take advantage of a vulnerable group and try to enter the city with them. In the last video, I spoke about murders happening in the gate, and lines in the game files indicate that at least one person suspects that a refugee might be responsible for this. You're wasting your time just like those guards. Look no further than the refugee camp. I've told them that the killer must be a refugee, but they're already overwhelmed by that horde, and they refuse to take my advice. I said all along, go to that refugee camp and you'll find the murderer straight away. However, we can also see a line in the old past tense version which says this, I told her it hadn't been a refugee actually. When we arrive at the city, there will be a strong feeling amongst many Baldurians that the refugees are responsible for the woes of the city, and it wouldn't surprise me if the Absolute could take advantage of this instability when infiltrating it. We saw before that there is a refugee camp, but who runs this camp? Who are the de facto leaders of the refugees? We can see this line. You should speak to Master Cagne about that. Or Mr. Day. I think he leads these refugees. Oh, you heard about that. Master Cagne tells us that personal property is theft, so he helped these refugees take the home for themselves. And there appears to be a place called Key Cagne. Regarding Day, there seems to be even less information, but perhaps that their name is Driss Day. In Descent into Avernus, we can see that Thavius Krieg, the architect of Elturel's descent and former high overseer of the city there, actually arrives with the refugees to Baldur's Gate, and he is kept hidden by fellow devil worshipper Thalmara Vantamper. This differs to the actual canon comic Infernal Tides, where he remains at the city of Elturel, so it's important to keep in mind that not everything in Descent into Avernus is canon, especially bits that rely heavily on character choice. In Infernal Tides, the protagonists, which includes Minsk, spend very little time in Baldur's Gate and leave before the descent happens, but I have no doubt that Larian will use some of the happenings in Descent into Avernus regarding refugees for Baldur's Gate 3. One of these fears that the Baldurians will have is that the same thing that happened to Elturel will happen to Baldur's Gate. The average person will know nothing of the finer details about why Elturel fell, such as Thavius Krieg's contract with Zariel. With the anti-tiefling propaganda we have already seen, and the stories of Elturel's descent, I can only imagine that this line in Descent into Avernus will be something that Larian will want to build upon in Baldur's Gate 3. Rumours concerning Elturel's disappearance spread like wildfire, stoking fears that the Baldur's Gate might be next. In fact, the agitated citizens of Baldur's Gate are obviously causing some concern to the higher-ups, as we can see in these two lines here. You are traitors, both of you. The city is crawling under the weight of immigrants. The cult is coming for us. A black hand is the only one trying to do something about it. Very passionate speech, Lord Something, as always. Have you seen the crowd outside? If black hand is not elected, we will have a revolution on our hands. The immigrants will be the least of our problem if that happens. Rivalin Blackhand is the owner of Sorceress Sundries, a shop you may remember from the first game, when it was owned by Halbazar Drin. In the adventure Murder in Bolas Gate, we can see some information about Blackhand regarding how he got his name. The wizard in residence, an aged human who calls himself Rivalin Blackhand, claims to have come from Halrua. Blackhand says he was once capable of mighty magic before a battle with a demon blackened and withered his right hand, forcing him to end his adventuring ways. We can also see that Blackhand will be a candidate in an election for a new duke. 
boring speech about why I, Lord Leo something, is better suited than Blackhand to become Duke. The Cult of the Absolute is obviously a hoax from Blackhand used to gain political power. I don't know about the cult, but Blackhand is agitating the city. He wants blood. It is not good for business. If Blackhand is elected, things are going to get bad. It's interesting that it says here that he wants blood, and yet it also seems that Blackhand is trying to prove that there is a real threat with the Cult of the Absolute, that some individuals are not believing. Is he looking to purge the city of anything he perceives to be a threat to it? Will the refugees be caught up in that? It's unclear at this stage who the other Dukes are. We can see Belen Stelmane in the game files, and in Descent into Avernus, she was under the mental control of an Illithid, but I can't find any reference to Dillard Portier or Thalamra Van Tamper. Which Duke will Blackhand be replacing? Has Dillard or Thalamra died in between the events of Descent into Avernus and Baldur's Gate 3? Or has it been assumed that Ravenguard is dead? Let's take a look at some of the lines that tell us about this disease. If a disease like this spreads, it could mean the deaths of hundreds. There must be another spreading disease, but I can see the symptoms. You're just as doomed as I am. At least if we're to die, it needn't be alone. May Kalemvor be merciful upon you. I'm dying, you disease spreading bastard. You gave me the crawling fever. Yes, the crawling fever, a mysterious disease affecting the western heartlands and seemingly not yet at the city of Baldur's Gate, but could this only be a matter of time? Could this fever drag the city into further chaos? We can see some of the drastic measures that the Flaming Fist are taking to contain the disease here. The Flaming Fist is here to make sure it doesn't spread. They want to burn down this house and all of us too. My father, he's dying and it's only a matter of time before the Flaming Fist finds us and tries to burn us out. Flaming Fist, get your oil, we'll burn out this pox and someone find Gerald, the Plague Guard. There are lines that also indicate that if we arrive in Baldur's Gate and we are infected, it could severely hinder our chances of getting in. You are hereby banished from Baldur's Gate. If you return or remain, you will be killed on sight. In order to ensure that this plague does not spread, I wish you luck. May the gods smile upon you. We can see some specific names relating to the crawling fever, and one of them that we saw before is Gerald, who appears to be something called a plague guard. Initially, I thought he would be like a plague doctor from medieval Europe, but this line here, I've come to address the illness, your services are no longer required, plague guard, this kind of makes out that he is a last resort and is potentially in charge of stopping the plague from spreading in more brutal ways. We can see in patch 5 that a line has been added simply called hospital bed. Within the city of Baldur's Gate, there is a hospital called Harborside, and in Descent into Avernus, it is described as follows. Chronically understaffed, especially in those wards catering to poor outer city residents, the hospital has constant security problems, from angry patients to spontaneously arising undead. Unethical or experimental treatments by priests of non-good faiths, or excessive withdrawals from the stores of pain-killing narcotics. It perhaps says something about Bowler's Gate that city officials decided to build the hospital right next to Cliffgate convenient to the graveyard and as far as possible from the wealthy neighbourhoods. Yikes. So an outbreak in the city really would bring it to its knees. It's safe to say that with a priest being murdered, corruption and disorder in the Flaming Fist, a city on lockdown with refugees clamouring to get in, and finally a deadly disease which is at risk of ravaging the city, it's clear that Baldur's Gate will be a little on edge when we arrive. But it also seems like we'll have plenty of opportunity to influence it how we see fit giving us lots of scope for different playthroughs. Anyway, thanks for watching guys. If you enjoyed this video, then do please give me a like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye.